In this episode, we are going to learn the 16th strategy. The name of the strategy is letting the enemy off in order to catch him. Welcome to subscribe to the 36 Stratagems channel, comment or send us an email, and you will get an ebook about 36 Stratagems on sale. Cornered prey will often mount a final desperate attack, to prevent this you let the enemy believe he still has a chance for freedom, his will to fight is thus dampened by his desire to escape. When in the end the freedom is proven a false of the enemy's morale will be defeated, and he will surrender without a fight, in Aesop's fables. There is a story called The Lion and the Mouse, in this story, a little mouse accidentally encounters a lion, who could have easily killed it, however, unexpectedly, the lion chose to let the mouse go, deeply grateful, the mouse promised to repay the lion if the opportunity arose in the future, shortly after, the lion becomes trapped in a hunter's net, desperate, the little mouse gnaws through the net rope, and sets the lion free. This story vividly illustrates the stratagem of playing hard to get, where one allows the opponent to go first, and anticipates possible reciprocity in the future. In a Chinese story, during the Three Kingdoms period, there was a prominent figure named Zhuge Liang from the Shu Kingdom. He captured Menghua, a tribal leader in southern China, seven times, and each time, he released him. This story exemplifies the concept that mutual captures and releases are necessary before capturing and convincing the other party. In the first six captures, Jugo Liang physically restrained Meng Hua, but his spirit remained unconvinced. Only by killing Meng Hua would his rebellion cease. However, by the seventh capture, Meng Hua's heart was completely won over, and he became willing to submit vowing not to resist any longer. The Shu Kingdom consolidated its control over the South as a result, therefore, the seven instances of capture and release were not a waste of soldiers' lives, but rather a strategic approach that convinced the other side through repeated capture and release. In order to strategically handle the situation, there are certain tactics that need to be employed. When aiming for convergence, we must initially adopt an expansionist approach, if the intention is to weaken something, it must be temporarily strengthened. If the stratagem is to abandon it, it must be temporarily elevated, and if the goal is to acquire it, it must be temporarily surrendered, engaging in deliberate indulgence towards the enemy during an encircling attack is not an arbitrary act of leniency, but rather a method of initially loosening the pressure so as not to push the enemy too hard, Coercion implies that soldiers will resist, and the situation will deteriorate rapidly if excessive force is applied, instead of pressuring relentlessly. It is more effective to tire out their strength, disperse them, and then capture them without much bloodshed. Applying direct pressure on the enemy will provoke violent counterattacks, avoiding direct confrontation, however, naturally reduces the enemy's power. This doesn't mean we shouldn't pursue the enemy, but rather we should carefully consider how to pursue them. If we drive the enemy into a corner, they will be forced to concentrate their efforts and fight back desperately. It is more advantageous to relax for a while, allowing the enemy to lower their guard and loosen their will, and then seize an opportunity to annihilate them. Since we cannot afford to let the enemy go, we should refrain from confronting them head-on. This weakens their physical strength while allowing us to understand their intentions. By waiting for the enemy to exhaust their true strength, we can conquer them without wasting unnecessary time. We should capture the enemy when they become tired of fleeing. As long as the enemy in our grasp believes there is even the slightest chance of escape, they will desperately try to run away. Fleeing in panic not only consumes physical energy, but also wears down their mental fortitude. By presenting them with the threat of death, while leaving them with the illusion of escape, they will exert all their effort to avoid harm, their physical and mental capacities are limited, and when they tire from running, they will stop. At this point, they will lose their resistance, offering us an opportunity to capture or overcome them. If we fail to seize them when they grow weary of fleeing and they still possess the capacity to resist, they will likely fight to the death. In such a scenario, violent counterattacks by the enemy are inevitable, resulting in significant losses. In the next episode, 
We will start the 17th strategy. If you want to listen, please subscribe to this channel and you won't get lost.